we need to put our piston in to our cylinder. That way, once we get the piston in the cylinder, we can stick this on to the crankcase and hook up the uh, connecting rod on the bottom to the crankshaft. Now, one of the problems I have, and you know, I suppose I could actually, maybe it would make it simpler instead of trying to put the piston in there and flopping that all around maybe it would make it simpler if I put my uh, cylinder jug on here first I think that's what we're going to do Just kind of reinforce it and help it to stick again. Maybe to fill in whatever gaposis there might be there. Okay, so now we're going to put our piston in, and I don't have a uh, piston ring compressor small enough, so I haven't come across my container of hose clamps. So what I'm going to have to do is try and compress each one of these springs, uh, these rings by hand, and uh, before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the cylinder, and this engine um, uses 16 to 1 oil and gas mix and the mixture is with regular motor oil it is not with uh, two cycle oil it's the way these things were made And I'll put a little bit of oil on the piston as well, just to help it. See, this gets lubricated by the fuel and oil mix. That's the lubrication that it gets once it's running. Now, there's only one way that the cylinder could go on. I mean, the cylinder could be bolted on any which way. Only one way for it to go properly, and that's so that our exhaust uh, exits out this side and across the back, and our um, intake, and this has this hole on the piston on this one side. Only one side has that hole, and that's what... Uh, works our intake. So I want to make sure I have my rings lined up properly here. One here, one there, and one over on this side so that I don't don't get them lined up. They want to be opposing one another. Now here comes the, the issue of can I get it, get my fingers in there enough to squeeze it. And just slide in. There's one. And at the same time, I have got to make sure that my connecting rod will clear down here as it goes in. Okay. Hmm. 
Number three. I'll push it down to the cylinder there. Now the question is, oh yeah. And we've got it lined right up with our crankshaft. And we're going to do the same thing here. Put oil on our crankshaft. put our rod bearing cap on. Okay, now you can see the bearing cap that I'm putting in place. And again, these just have lock nuts on them. The lock washers under the bolt. Sorry, tighten it down all the way. Seems to be working okay. Put another squirt of oil in there. And I'm going to finish tightening this down. Click. Click. Okay. Now that's all done. The next part to go on is our intake manifold. And this goes on like a this, I do believe. Now because uh, I couldn't get the exact right size lock washers to go with these, I'm just using a little flat washer on them. And uh, so I'm going to, excuse me, so I'm going to use some Loctite to hold them in place. And I had to grind about three threads off of each one of these screws because they were just a little bit too long. Boy, this stuff is awful watery. It's usually a little bit thicker. Maybe I should have squeezed it back and forth a little bit, but it's okay. It is what it is. So we're going to put this on here and we want to do the same thing. I'm going to put a just a light coat of the gasket maker on there. I actually already had some on here because I was going to put this on a long time ago and I was going to paint it the same time I painted the block and then I realized, no, I can't do that. I'm going to be taking it off again. So I left the gasket glued in place. This is the original gasket that came with it. So it's glued in place. And we're just putting a little bit more on this side here to make it sticky get my fingers wiped off a little bit here and I 
can't remember now if I told you the story about these screws. This engine only had three of these screws on here when I got it. And I didn't have anything in my stash of nuts and bolts and all that kind of stuff that fit. And I went to the hardware store and they didn't have anything that fit just right. And then I went to my local Napa store and they did have what I needed. And as it turned out it was uh, it's a 12 12 24 I think it is or 12 32 I can't remember. Excuse me. That was my wife calling me to let me know that my new friends a pair of uh, Labrador retrievers I believe is what they are are up in the driveway they stop in occasionally and I think they're brothers and I think they're less than a year old and uh, they don't have any collars on them and but they don't look like they're starving to death but we have a lot of dogs I've noticed down here in the ten in the hills, at least this part of the hills of Tennessee, that wander around. Sometimes they wander around in pretty good sized packs too. So anyway, we decided that we're gonna make friends with them. We fed them some snack the other day, but we were trying to decide if we we're gonna buy regular dog food and have them hang around and adopt them but I guess we're not going to do that come on but we do have snack for them okay now we're going to do the same thing we're going to put the studs in for the head and uh, we're going to do the same thing we're going to use some blue Loctite on them. These actually do have lock washers on the nuts that go on the top. Come on now. There we go. I like using this pair of pliers. These are these are uh, actually put that thing down. These are actually uh, battery pliers, but they do the job for grabbing and letting go if you're just tightening something up or loosening it up, and you don't have a square head to work on. And the harder you grab on them, the more they grab. Okay. And so we got to do that three more times. And the alternative to using that plier is to use jam nuts. Get two nuts in there and you hold the wrench on the back side like this one and then you tighten the front one down till they snug up against each other and that way you can use that for turning in your stud as well. And there you have it. And then when you get your stud down in where you want it, you put your wrench on there and reverse the outside one and take them both off. Just like that. Well, we're about to run out of battery on my camera. I forgot to charge it before I came down. But I have the original head gasket here. And uh, I'm going to put some goop on it. Is that the 
right one. Yep, that's the way it goes, just like that. So we're going to put a little goop on the back side of this. I didn't realize that I had saved the head gasket because I had said before that I would be end up making a head gasket. But if I don't have to make it, and I have one that's usable, I prefer to do that. Because it's going to be a whole lot better than anything that I can make. And as always happens, we're going to need some uh, touch-up along the way. See some of the paint came off because of the um, Loctite that we used. Okay. Much junk around George. Got time to clean up again. Okay. So now this has to go. There's only one way that it will go. And this is the exhaust side, I believe. It goes this way towards the intake side. So the spark plug is right over the intake. All right then. Now I'm using some stainless steel washers here for these. And I do have lock washers for these as well which are also stainless steel and then I have nuts but the nuts are not stainless steel because I couldn't find any that were fine thread and the studs on this side are fine thread but that's okay because we have a way to make them look really, really good. I suppose I could zap these down with an impact driver, couldn't I? Be a lot faster. Oh, spark plug to go in there that's good there now I have to silicone these in place Look at that. Woo How cool is that? So next time we come back, and I got a phone going off, we'll have all of these in place, and our next thing to do will be to install our breaker plate 
and then our flywheel after we install our electronic ignition. Thanks for watching, commenting, and subscribing. Until next time, this is George, the Shade Tree Fix It Man. Bye for now. Yeah, well, good thing one of you caught it. I had to take off three of the nuts and washers so that I could put this bracket on here and also to put this piece on here. One of my subscribers had asked me, how do you shut this thing off? Because there was no uh, kill wire coming out with the electronic ignition. Well, this is how you do it right here. Time to kill it. Whoop. You just bend that over and touch it to the wire and the spark plug and that grounds it out. One final look at what we have accomplished. Yeehaw!